Hey, I'm Ishman Rowe. My boat just came in from Flippin' Arkansas. I'm here at CNC Marine here in Modesto. You know, let's go check it out. We're gonna start rigging this thing. You know, see, Lawrence sent me a full network, basically already complete, but I did most of the networking already through my boat already. So the only thing that I'm gonna have to add is my connection for my Yamaha so I can read the actual um, mileage for my fuel and everything all through that, through my Lawrence unit itself. The four units that I'm gonna run up front, which is gonna be an HDS-5 and an HDS-10 up front. Um, I'm gonna run the HDS-5 up front for when I'm running GPS pretty much all the time. And then the HDS-10 is gonna run for the structure scan and the regular sonar itself. And then on the console, I'm gonna run an HDS-8 and then I'm gonna run an HDS-10 and then same thing. The HDS-8 is gonna be for the GPS and for all my mapping, especially when I have my Navionics chips in there. And then the HDS-10 is gonna be for all my sonar, you know, logging and when I'm using the structure scan and things like that. So I'm having running gonna run four units this year. Um, gotta have your Sonic Hub. You know, you gotta have the jams while you're out there. The old school hip hop always kicking. Um, a serious weather module, I have to have that. One thing it is, is I'm getting serious uh, weather on my unit so I can tell which way the storms are coming in. Uh, you know, you're out there fishing and all of a sudden there's thunderstorms all around you where you can see which direction that they're heading. So if you have a particular pattern going on when it's raining and the fish are biting better when it's raining, well you can know if it's raining on some other part of the lake and you can make that run over there. Or you can see wind direction so you know which way the wind's going to blow. So if you need to find some protection out of the weather, protection just from the wind to fish a little bit better, you'll have that too all on your Sirius module and then you get, like I said, all the uh, Sirius XM stations on that. And then structure scan transducers. I'll be running two of those. I want one off the uh, motor guide 109 with the transducer already in the unit. And then I'll have this structure scan here and I will be running the um, Hydrowave. Yamaha SHO 250. I mean, what else can you say about it? I mean, it's the four stroke engine of all engines. I have been running this engine now for uh, a year and it is great not to have to put any oil in my boat. I think um, when Yamaha created this engine, they created the best thing out there and everybody is out chasing, you know, not carrying any oil on the road it allows me to carry that much more tackle. And I am a tackle whore and I have more tackle than pretty much anybody in their truck. Oh yeah, I'm running the lithium series, uh, basically a 36 volt system for my trolling motor and a 12 volt system for all my electronics and my crank and battery. Motor Guide makes the best trolling motor, I believe, on the market, but I always carry a spare of anything. It's like when you're in an airplane, there's always a spare and always a backup. You know, you run down the lake and you hit a stump and you bend a prop shaft or you break a cable, you know, it, you don't have anything you can do to repair that at the time. So I always carry a spare motor guide troller motor just for those instances there. I've never had one break on me. It's usually operator error when I have something like that happen. And so I gotta be prepared. You know, I get down and dirty when I'm getting in some of those backwaters and you get on some of them stumps and things like that and you push on it too hard, things are gonna happen. Uh, running a kill shield at the bottom of the boat, a black kill shield, you know, so I can just beach my boat at times or when I get into super shallow water, I don't have to worry about damaging the hole. That's pretty tricky is I'm actually able to run a push pull uh, across the back of the deck that actually stays out of my co-angler or my marshal's way. So when I'm out there fishing and if I have my push pull, I need that to pull it out. And as we start working our way to the front of the boat, you'll see I'm running the uh, motor guide Tour Edition 109. Got that ready. I'm gonna add a cool foot to that. Um, makes it pretty cool. So sometimes I like to fish either barefooted or I like to fish in flip flops and I don't ever have to worry about anything there with the cool foot on it. So that's the start right now. We're gonna get into the boat. You know, make sure that your mount's hanging over the front. Um, far enough over the rub rail so that when the shaft comes down, it's not going to be bumping up here. So if it pivots or it needs to break away, um, you're not going to hit the rub rail. Because um, there's certain times, you know, we're all getting in that shallow water. We hit rocks, we hit stumps, and, you know, the breakaway mount on the motor guy, which I love so much, keeps me from bending most of the shafts most of the time. Well, so you just got to make sure it's coming off the front of it. Yeah, basically, once you got you got them marked, you want to just go ahead and drill out your holes so that the uh, bolts will fit through there. Is if you don't put anti-season on there, 
You get in some of the places that have the brackish water, places like the Delta, Potomac River, Louisiana Delta, you get that salt and then you won't be able to get them off. So if you ever have to replace your trolling motor mount, it makes it just easier to get them backed off. I mean, too. like you said, you know, stainless versus stainless, it gets all galled up and then you're ruined. And you, when you ruin your bolts, then what are you gonna do? You know, it makes it just that much harder. Something that takes you, basically took him 30 seconds to put on there, will save you hours and hours of hassle when it's all said and done. Yes, yes. I'm gonna start from the back. I got that one lined up. Yeah, the washers and the nuts on the back side. And we're gonna get in here and, you know, I'm gonna tighten them down from both sides to make sure this thing is fully tight and it doesn't have any play in it at all. It's one thing about, you know, me being with Ranger is I fish so much that I gotta have something that's gonna keep, me, the equipment that's gonna keep me safe out on the water. And with every compartment being foam filled with the Ranger, you don't really have that don't, you don't have that worry. Uh, basically, we're doing a cross pattern drilling so that you get a flush mount and they're not going to pull on each other and they won't bind up. Start on the first one again. So you're going to have no movement. The whole boat shakes on this deal. So, and, and you know, halfway, quarter way through the season after fishing a couple of events, you just want to make sure that you get back in there and tighten them down again just to be sure that they're snug. You know, one of the reasons that I put the uh, transducer in, already in the uh, motor guide trolling motor is because when I put the structure scan on there, I'm not trying to have a bunch of uh, cables and a bunch of wiring hanging down from there. So now I only have one structure scan wire that's running down the lower unit instead of having a structure scan and having another sonar um, transducer because you still want to use both. You know, the one thing about structure scan is it is great for, for looking at and identifying, but I still like to use my basic sonar, especially when I'm drop shotting to be able to see, you know, where my line is um, when I'm fishing for those fish that are suspended. Probably slide it up a little more. I drill um, all the way through the center so that the connection from the trolling motor to here has a little box. And so if I ever have to change out my trolling motor, which is this little box here, you got the two cables that go in this way and the two that go in this way, I'm drilling right through the middle so that I can slide this box in and out. And what I'll do is I'll put a piece of tube in there and I'll face it upwards so that the water will still drain back into here to the drain that's here. So it drains out into the bilge instead of draining back into here. First thing you gotta do before you actually drill a hole in the fiberglass is you gotta use old school masking tape to put it around there. And then what you wanna do is with your hole saws, you wanna start in reverse and you wanna hold it there and you will start out at high speed to get right in there so you don't crack the fiberglass. And don't forget your tape. <laughs> Uh, cocoon's wrap, same wrap as last time. You know, we're on day two here uh, at CNC Marine working on the boat. You know, today we've actually got four guys uh, getting in there. You know, Chris has been there with us the whole time. We finally got Greg out here and then the master technician all the way in the back himself, Richard. You know, he's uh, the best in the market when it comes to rigging boats. Um, we've got the trolling motor mounted on here. We've actually run the cables for the structure scan, the ethernet cables for the Larance units. I mean, we've pretty much got almost everything done up here that we need to get done. What's different this year is that usually I mount my HDS-10 right here so that it's facing up to me, but this year I'm actually gonna mount it on a ram mount and set it off to the side. I have a structure scan, uh, both of them placed in the rod locker right there, uh, the one running to the front unit and the one running to the back unit. Also what we finished, Chris and Greg have already mounted the, the speakers and mounted the Sonic Hub in. The only thing that they haven't mounted yet is where the actual iPod goes into. They've mounted the Sirius satellite right there off the side, so it's gonna be completely out of my way, out of the non-boater's way. And so the other thing that we've done is, as Richard has started on back here, is he's actually started on the jack plate, put in the jack plate motor in, putting the jack plate actually on, and putting the um, 
the pumps in for the power poles that we're going to run because I'm running two power poles this year. That's another thing that was different from last year is I ran one power pole. This year I'm going to run two power poles on it um, so you stay completely still. Right now Richard's installing the uh, Bob's jack plate. Um, the one thing that I really do love is a Bob's hydraulic jack plate. Like I said, it's probably the best jack plate on the market. These guys make jack plates for the guys who are offshore racing so it's going to be a sturdy, very durable jack plate. You know, you have to put the pumps inside, you have to run the hoses out um, for that and then you can also see when you're in there the two pumps for the power poles that we have going on in there and then we always we have the power pole brackets mounted right exactly there behind the jack plate. The ram mount because with the Ranger Z console it kind of bends they actually make a little mount for that but as we're sitting here looking at it we decided to take the ram mount and cut it right here so that it sits flush right down here and so now you don't have another extra bracket in there it's completely flush it's not going to move at all when I, when, I, when I start out on the season, you know, basically I'm going to be running my mapping off of this and my, my sonar and structure scan off the HDS-10 unit so I can get a really good picture of what's going on on the bottom. So now it's basically having, it's like going to a sports bar and they have all those extra TVs and you get to watch a couple different games and that's what it's going to be like is now I'll be able to uh, split screen zoom in and zoom out on my mapping on this unit and then I'll be able to run down scan uh, and side by side left and right and run my regular sonar so I can all see everything that's going on when I'm out there you know on the water because now you got to have every little thing better than every other guy because that's what everybody's doing you know as you see more and more guys are going to start running three or four units on their boat just because they they need to see the picture bigger and it might show you something you might find one little rock on a flat that nobody else seen and all of a sudden all those fish are sitting on that and, and that's what you can do we're running the wire right now uh the power wire for the one of the structure scan unit what do you got going on there Greg? he's basically um heating up the power cables for the uh power poles Heat shrinking them, just to make sure he gets a good seal on them. Uh, we're getting ready to test the jack plate, uh, make sure that it powers up and down. Right now we're getting ready to mount the motor onto the boat, so we got to get a forklift in here. We're talking about over 500 pounds that we got to put on the back of this boat. You know, it's, if it was a two-stroke motor, four-stroke motor, you're looking at over 500 pounds, so lifting it by hand is not an option. Got it. Which way are we going? Going downwards to the ground. How do you know? You know, like I said, I'm, I'm one of them guys that when it gets warm outside, I really like to either fish barefooted or fish in flip-flops. And this cool foot deal is pretty cool just in case, you know, it gets really hot out there and your uh, foot slips off of the, uh, slips out of your flip-flop and you can put it right up on here. Um, sometimes you want to jump in the lake. The cool foot thing is just a nice option. Um, the one thing about the Ranger decks is they have padding underneath them. You know, when you stand up there for eight hours in a day, you know, and then you're standing on the trolling motor, you still got a little extra padding. It just, you know, takes the wear and tear off of you over the years. And especially as much as I get to fish, I need to have a, a few little extra things to uh, keep me out on the water a little bit longer. Keeps me from being fatigued, I think, you know, it's just, just little extra things that I don't, you know, live without that I have to have on my boat. The one thing, you know, that the recess foot pedal is great because you um, you get to stand flush with the boat and so you're not like sitting there like we call Captain Morgan it all day. Um, I've actually add a one inch piece of fiberglass in my reset foot pedal so it's just not completely level because if you step down you're going to be leaning forward and if you might catch a wave it'll push you forward or if you step back it might throw you into the back of the boat. So this one inch piece of plywood just raises it just enough that it just gives me a little bit more stability when I'm standing up in my boat so I add that. Um, the foot pedal's mounted down so that it's not going to move and like I said what I did is I made it for this box to uh, be a quick release system that is basically uh, two small nuts in here that I can unscrew to replace my trolling motor so it'll be um, four bolts 
that hold the foot pedal down, the two nuts here, and then this twist right off of here, and I can replace my motor guide troll motor if I ever have any issues. Now, working on the, the last few finishing touches of it, I'll kind of go through everything. Been working hard, you know, several hours through the night and early, early in the morning. Um, I just laid the keel shield out which is right there. I'm running a black keel shield. That's actually the back side of the keel shield. Um, keel shield's great. You know, you can park your boat on the ramp if you need to. Uh, it helps keep you, if you want to beach it on rocks or something like that, just keeps you from damaging the fiberglass. Folks, some of the simplest things, you know, this is one of those things that you hope that you never have to use it, but you rather have it than not have it. And, and that's just basically a fire extinguisher. You know, safety first. You know, the one thing about me is I always carry three life jackets in my boat. You know, one for myself, one for my uh, co-angler observer if they don't have one, and then always having a backup or a spare because you never want to be out of that water and that big motor's running and not have a life jacket on. Or even those days when it's really rough and being out there six footers if you're fishing the Great Lakes or even sometimes really bad on Clear Lake trying to fish the Narrows, you got to make sure that you're going to be out there and be safe. I mean, the, the one time you wear your life jacket could be the one time that it saves your life, so that's why I wear my life jacket every single time keep a fire extinguisher in the boat. I usually keep a paddle, a throw cushion, a whistle. I mean, and in, in, in even carrying flares and things like that are, are, are things to have. And then I always keep a first aid kit in my boat as well. We got the hydro wave installed, ran the cables through. So they come out here. You wanna make sure everything's neat and clean on your boat. The Lowrance HDS-5 is in. We got the Lowrance HDS-10 in here sitting on a ram mount. Uh, mounted down the uh, power pole foot pedals for when you're out there fishing. A lot of guys say, Ish, why don't you use the remotes? Well, this way it's hands free. You know, you're weeding through the weeds and all of a sudden you roll up on a bed fish and you make that you want to make that pitch to them and you can put the power pole down with your foot and still make that pitch without having any, you know, hindrance on your hand. On the hydrowave, you know, the hydrowave I think is is something that is is definitely a key. You know, they're relatively inexpensive if you look at the amount of money that we're fishing for. You know, that one bite could definitely make the difference. The thing about the hydrowave that I like is it has a shiner feed on it. So when I'm down in Florida or in an, or Georgia or South Carolina where there's a lot of shiners, I can actually turn that on and, and, and imitate the shiners. <laughs> The cool thing about the Sonic Hub is that, you know, you, you might have some music on your iPad or, or your iPhone or, you know, an iPod, and you can actually just plug it right in here. But for the people that don't have an iPhone and I have a Droid, you can actually just take your USB cord that comes with your, from your charger and plug it in there and plug it in your phone, and you can actually play music off your phone onto your Sonic Hub. So when you're out there, you want to have a playlist set up, you can have jam all the way. We installed the hydraulic lift plate gauge so I can see how high I'm raising my lift, um, my jack plate, my Bob's jack plate, and then also, you know, my switch at the uh, console for my power poles to go, both my power poles going up and down. Putting on the good old neoprene power pole covers, um, it's just a good way to store them. You know, um, I, I don't really think it hurts anything to do it. Um, I just like having them on there because it looks pretty cool, and, but I think it helps when you're traveling long distances like I will be doing here very shortly. You know, I'm going 3,000 miles. I think it'll keep the bugs off of it, keep the rocks from hitting it. You know, now we got the power poles on. You had the bracket that you guys saw um, yesterday, and now that we've got the four bolts mounted on here um, so that the power poles are mounted, we've already put um, a little bit over six uh, quarts into the engine here and we're gonna go and fire it up a little bit. This part had to be that part has to be pressed in. I keep mine though. Moto stop, you know, when you're trailing, you can make sure that you have, you know, the best tools for trailering, keeps you from having accidents, keeps you from, you know, making sure you get to the water. That's all you want to do is get to the water and go fishing. And, and Moto Stop's one of those deals. It's a motor tote that I really like and Yamaha seems to like it because it actually holds the whole mount itself. And you got to make sure that you put these on when you leave and take them off before you launch. Kent Brown. <laughs> Basically, I'm putting strap down for my push pull.
We're good to go. Everything seemed to work. Fired her up on the first fire. Yamaha SHO, you know. What else can I say? Fires up, ready to go. Starts every time.